Hello y'all, what's up? My name is Elizabeth and today I have another message for you. So this message is titled, What's Your Letter? So with that said, let's get started. So many of y'all know that Thanksgiving is literally just around the bend. Uh, in my mind, by the time I release this video, it will be one week before Thanksgiving. Actually, a little bit less since it's released on Friday, so, and Thanksgiving is on Thursday. So, a little bit less than a week on Thursday. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure everybody's Thanksgiving is going to be at least a little different, if not more like completely different. I know for my family, um, we're not going to even have a big Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving. I don't know about you. So, pretty much Thanksgiving kind of seems like it just got a sledgehammer just hammered down on it, you know. Um, it's almost like it's not even Thanksgiving anymore. So, with that in mind, if we minus the celebration of Thanksgiving, if we just take that away, do we still have Thanksgiving? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Thanksgiving is about being thankful. It's not about the celebration. The celebration is more of a cultural American thing that we created. But I believe the root core of Thanksgiving is about being thankful. So now that beckons the question, do we have something to be thankful for this year? In this midst of this whole crazy situation, we literally just changed, we're about, no, well, we haven't changed yet. In January, we will. But we're about to change presidents. We've been through COVID-19, still going through it. We got winter to go through, flu season. I mean, crazy, right? So we do, we still have something to be thankful for in the midst of our situation. So today we're going to be looking at a passage in Philippians 10, 10 to 13. Now, in verse 13, Philippians 10, 13, we're going to see the one of the verses that I believe is most used out of context. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me first just say, in this passage, we're going to see that Paul demonstrates to the Philippians how to be satisfied and strengthened in the Lord. See, Paul is currently in prison. And the Church of Philippi is concerned about Paul's well-being. So Paul writes this letter to the Church of Philippi saying, thank you for your concern about me and, and being thankful for their support at the same time telling about how he feels about his situation. So now as believers, we can be just like Paul. We can demonstrate how to be satisfied and strengthened the Lord. See, right now, we kind of feel like, we kind of feel like prisoners a little bit. Like, we're told when we can go and when we can, what we should wear on our face and what we should not wear on our faces. So we're told, we're kind of like prisoners. And there's people out there, whether they're concerned or not concerned, they're watching our actions. How are we responding to this situation? And so what is our message? What is our letter to the world about the situation we're in the midst of right now? What is our letter? And that's the title I titled it, the sermon. So let's first read Philippians 10, 10 to 13, straight through, okay? Without stopping. Verse 10, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. 
You have indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Now that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to be how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hungry, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Okay. Sounds pretty good, right? So the first point I want to get out is we are examples. So that, that can be found, I take that out of Philippians 10, 10 through 11a, where it says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You have indeed concern for me, but you had no opportunity. Now that I am speaking of being in need, so now he's a, so the people are concerned about Paul's well-being. And Paul is realizing this, so first he addresses being thankful for them being concerned for him. And secondly, he realizes he's a witness, and he's about to uh, give his witness or his example of how to how to deal with this circumstance that he's in, that the Philippi, the, the people of Philippi know that he, he's in this situation. As he says, now, now that I am speaking of being in need. So he's about to go into uh, finish verse 11 there. And so Paul realizes that he's an example. And so are we. We are an example. People are watching us. People are seeing how are we going to react in this situation, this Thanksgiving. Are we going to react to it? Are we going to complain? What's our response? What is our letter to the world? So Paul is responding to these people. He's writing a letter. And so what is Paul's response? What is Paul's letter? And that is that he is satisfied. We find that out in Philippians 10, 11 through 12. So are we satisfied? Is that our response? Is that a letter to the world? This is Paul's response. For I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hungry, abundance and need. So Paul has learned to be satisfied in whatever situation he is in. And he's sh with his life, he is showing that as an example to the church of Philippi. Can we be that example? Can we show that to other people that we are satisfied? Is that what's going to be written to our letter to the world, to those who are watching us in this Thanksgiving season and as the holiday are rolling around the bend, just one way after the other, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, New Year's, just one way after the other. What is our response? What is going to be our letter to the rest of the world in this midst of this crazy season we're living in? And the last verse, most taken out of context, Philippians 10, 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Another translation says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, so that him is Christ, him is God, he's abiding in God. Now, let me back in this question. When Paul says all things, does he really mean all things? We can do all things. Does that mean I can jump off the roof and not crack my head open, all things? Does that mean if I'm a believer and someone else is a believer and we're having a spawn match uh, to the death of it, does that mean all things that I'm going to win? Because who's going to win if we all believe that all things, all things, is it really all things or is it something more specific as a believer? I think what Paul is trying to say here when he says all things that I personally believe is that he's talking about all things in the filter of God's will, in the funnel of God's will, or 
however you want to think of it, I kind of think of it as a funnel. Like, I can do all things if it's in the pattern, if it aligns with what God is calling us to do, which is to further his kingdom, which is to be a witness to other people. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all of God's will for me through him who strengthens me. And I think that's an important idea to um, understand. It's kind of like the, word, the verse, uh, but God, not but that, sorry, wrong verse. Um, for all things work together for good to those who love God. For those who love God, and if we love God, we will love his will. And we will live by his will. So see, we got to funnel it in. We got to see it in the right perspective. The right perspective is through God's will. So God's will is not for me to be stupid and jump off a 10-story building. That's not God's will. Then I'm definitely not going to be able to do that. And I'm pretty sure it's not God's will, so I'm trying to not give you all ideas to jump off a roof there. Okay, so I know I said a lot of things. So, I guess the point of this whole message, what I want to leave you all with today is this question. What is your letter? What is your response to the world? This Thanksgiving. You're going to be focused on a Thanksgiving that's about celebration? Or you're going to be focused more on the part of being thankful? Now, the last question is, in your letter, what are you, what are you thankful for? And I think we have a lot more to be thankful for. Number one, we're breathing. Number two, God has given us a purpose on this earth, and that is to further his mission. We are not like the rest of the world, aimlessly going around without any purpose in life. Well, they have a purpose, but they don't know their purpose. Or at least they think they do, but they really don't. They're just blind mice walking around aimlessly. We have a purpose. We have a relationship with our creator because of Jesus Christ, because he died for our sins. That's what we have to be thankful for. And is, is that what we're going to be focusing on this Thanksgiving, that part of being thankful? Is that what we're going to write in our letter? Now, a letter that we're going to write, I'm not talking about a physical letter, I'm talking about a letter with our life. Paul demonstrated this not only in his letter by writing to the Church of Philippi, but he demonstrated by using his own life. So it's all life going to reflect the letter that we are telling the rest of the world. What is our letter? What is it? Are we thankful for what we have? Even if it's nothing but the Lord on our side. We are strengthened in the Lord. Is that what we are satisfied in? It's a choice that we have to make. So, what is all that? Thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the message. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. Um, just remember that you don't need Thanksgiving traditions and celebration to be thankful. Uh, you can have Thanksgiving every day because Thanksgiving is all about being thankful. Just wanted to say that. Um, my second thing I want to say is I changed my uh, poetry website. So you can... Uh, on my poetry website, there's actually a link that forwards you to that. And I'll also have the new link down in the description box below. You can look at the link here. Um, as always, please remember to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, comment down below because I'd love to hear from you. Um, and I think that's it. God bless you. See you next time. Bye.